Hello, welcome to episode 9 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to have a look at conditions in our templates. If you're creating templates that you want to be able to reuse or distribute to other people, then needing to add some sort of condition to your template is a fairly common occurrence. Usually this takes the form of a parameter you're passing in, which will then be used to make a decision as to what you do in that template, whether you deploy a particular resource, how you configure a resource, or so on. Um, and so today we're going to have a look at the tools available in the ARM template language for us to do conditions inside a template. There are two concepts we're going to look at today. These are conditions and if. So these are two different ways of doing conditionals inside your template and they both have different purposes. So the first is condition and a condition is used to define whether or not to deploy a top level resource. So you can only use this at the resource level and you can apply a condition based on some logic which will allow you to decide whether or not you deploy that resource as a whole. So if your condition evaluates to false, then that resource will effectively be no opt and it will not be deployed at all. This works fine for when you're talking about deploying whole resources, but if you want to do something inside a resource, so change a property or a configuration of a resource based on a property, then you can't use condition for that. And that's where we'll also then be looking at if. So if is a function, like any of the other ARM template functions we looked at previously, that allows us to evaluate a statement and then do something if it's true and do something else if it's false. But these can be applied at the property level rather than needing to be at the resource level. And so usually you'll use a combination of the two of these to achieve whatever it is you want to do in your template. For the rest of today's session, we're going to have a look at an example that uses both of these to see how you can use them in action. We're going to use this template here for the demo. And this template is doing something very simple. It's deploying a network card into Azure. But what we want to do is we want to change this template to allow it for a choice when you deploy the network card. And that choice is whether or not the network card has a public IP address or just a private IP address. And we're going to make that choice by feeding in a parameter. And then we're going to do some things in the template using conditions and if to make that choice work depending on what somebody passes in. Okay, so the first thing we've done is we've created a parameter. So we need something that indicates whether or not this is a public or a private network card. So we've got this parameter called network interface type. It's just a string we're passing in and it has two allowed values set. So you can either pass in the word public or private. And based on that, we will make our choices later in, this, in the template to decide what we're going to do. In the variables section, we've got a few preset variables just for naming some things. And then the last one in here, the one that says, you can see here called public IP one, is going to help us when we come to our if statement. So we'll look at that in a minute. So don't get worried by that right now. We'll come back to it, um, but that's gonna be forming part of our if statement. We have a look at further on template. We're creating a virtual network. There's nothing special here. We just need a virtual network to be able to attach our network card to. So we're creating one of those. And then the first thing we come to is our public IP address. So if you're going to make this network card publicly available, then you need a public IP address object. But if you're not, then you don't need one. And so it would be a waste of money to actually create a public IP address object if you're not going to use it. And so this is where we have our first choice. And we're going to use a condition to decide whether or not we create this object using that parameter we passed in. As this is a complete top level object, the private IP address is its own object, we can use condition here. And we can just use this to toggle whether or not we create the object. And so to do that, inside the public IP address object, we add a new property called condition. And in the value, we're going to use some of the other ARM template functions to decide whether or not this is true or false. So you can see we're using the equals function. Equals is just a normal ARM template function that takes two values and will return back whether or not they are equal. And so we pass in those two values, the first being the actual value of the parameter that came into the template. So we're using the parameters function to get the network interface type value. And then we're comparing that against the string public. So if that evaluates true, then our condition evaluates true and we create the public IP address. And if it evaluates to false, so that value was private instead, then the condition will evaluate to false and we won't create the public IP address. And that's all you have to do for a condition. They're reasonably simple. Now further down in the template, we've got our actual network interface. We've already decided whether or not we create the public IP address or not, but that's not enough to be able to actually use that in our template. So if somebody does pass in that they want this to be a public network interface, 
then not only do we need to create the public IP address, we need to assign the public IP address to the network card. But if it's private, we don't want to assign that a public IP address. The assignment of a public IP address is not a top level object, it's a property of the network card. And so for this, we're gonna to have to use the if statement instead. And so if we look at the lower section of the network interface, inside the IP configuration section, you can see we've got the public IP address property. And here, we've added an if statement to determine what we do. Again, if is just a normal ARM template function, so it behaves in the same way, the syntax is the same, but it takes three properties. The statement you want to evaluate to see whether it's true or false, what to do if that statement evaluates to true, and what to do if the statement evaluates to false. So here in the first property, we're using the equals function again to compare the network interface type property to whether it's a public or private string. And then the last two are our true and false actions. If it's true, what we've got here is referring to that variable we saw up above. So if we scroll back up and have a quick look at that. The public IP1 variable there contains the JSON that we need to actually reference the public IP address. This is just like you would write it in a normal template if you were statically referring to that, but we put it in a variable. Now, you don't have to do this. What we could have done is put this whole section in line inside the if statement. So this could have been the true action. But if we do that, we've got to put the whole of this string, which is a JSON object, inside that part of the if statement. We're going to have to escape it properly, and it's going to look very, very messy. So what I tend to do with these sort of things where you've got these more complicated JSON objects is to put them in a variable and then refer to the variable in your if statement rather than putting the whole text in there. If you prefer to do it the other way and put it all in line, that's absolutely fine. But this is the way I prefer to do it. I think it's neater and it's less effort to make it work. So we've got this public IP one variable. And we're referring to that in our if statement as the result. So if the first part of the if statement evaluates to true, what will get put in this section of the template is the content of that variable, which is the assignment of the public IP address to the network card. If it evaluates to false, then we're supplying this JSON null ob object. The JSON function is just another ARM template function, and what it will do is it will return a JSON object of whatever you pass in. So in this case, we're passing in null, and it will return a JSON null, which can be then used to the template. So effectively, it's assigning that property to the value null. So it doesn't have a value, effectively meaning we're not assigning a public IP address to it. Now we've got that, our template's ready to go. So now based on whether somebody passes in public or private to the template, it will go ahead and create a network card and it will then decide whether or not to create a public IP address and whether to assign that public IP address to the network card, all based on the user input. We're gonna go ahead and run this template now to see if it works. Got my parameters file here and I'm just setting the network interface type value and start where we're going to set it to private so that this deployment should not create the public IP address and it shouldn't assign it to the network card. We'll go ahead and run that from PowerShell. Nothing special here, this is just our standard deployment command. And we'll run that and then we'll hop over to the Azure portal and see what it creates. So this is our resource group. You can see it's created the virtual network that we asked for and the network interface, but there's no sign of a public IP address. And if we click on the actual network card, you can see that this only has a private IP address assigned to it. I'll go ahead now and change the parameters file over to the value being public and rerun that. And now we're back in the portal and you can see that it has in fact created our public IP address. And if we click on the network card, you can see that it now has a public and a private IP address assigned to it. One slight word of caution here, if I was to now change this back to having the value be private, what would happen, because I'm using the incremental deployment mode, is that it will change the property on the network interface so that the public IP address is no longer assigned to it. That will work as expected. But what it won't do is it won't delete the public IP address that's already here. Because it's incremental, it won't destroy those objects. If you were to run a complete deployment, 
then it would remove the public IP address. So that's something to be aware of if you're going to be changing these things regularly. You might need to think about cleaning up those resources or maybe using the complete mode. And that's all there is to creating conditions in your ARM templates. Hopefully you can see this is quite a powerful way to make your templates more generic and more reusable. Next week we're going to have a look at how you can use nested templates in your deployments, which is going to be a prerequisite for some of the other things we're going to look at in the future. Hopefully I'll see you next week, and until then have a great rest of your day.